Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting on shoes. In the past, I've customized squishies. I've done dolls. The hammer. Where Get the is hammer. I can't find it. I've even painted on shoes before. So yeah, I wanted to give it another go. I've seen tons of videos of people painting on Vans and Jordans and Air Force Ones and other shoes that the treasury cannot afford. So instead, today we're painting on... Lugs. I don't know. You've never heard of it. I've never heard of it either. It's fine. The Lugs. name's not important. Lugs. Someone could honestly easily mistake them for Vans as long as they don't look inside Lugs. the shoe, or on the side of the shoe, Lugs. or at the bottom Lugs. of the shoe. Just don't look at the shoe at all. You just gotta turn around and close your eyes and then they look just like Vans. I wanted a shoe that had the most available space to paint on and luckily these ones don't have shoelaces or too much going on. They're basic and I like that. I did a painting on shoes video a while ago. In fact, it was nine months ago that I painted those shoes, so this is kinda like my shoes are having a baby. An ugly baby. On those shoes that I had originally painted, the texture was more leathery. These ones are more like a canvasy kind of fabric, so we'll see how the texture turns out. I started off by taping up the soles to avoid as many accidents as possible. It took quite a bit of tape, a lot more than I anticipated. I also wanted to tape up these little flappy doos on the sides. I didn't want any paint to get on this part. I still wanted the shoes to keep some of their white accents. The tape was a bit oversized for the area though, so I pulled out a sharp pointy thing and cut them down to size. I also covered up the white part on the back. Ooh pretty much covered up anything that wasn't that canvas type of material. I didn't tape the white trims around the shoe though because I was feeling gutsy and also pretty lazy. I knew it would take forever to cover them up so I figured I could just try to be extra careful around them instead. And after all that prep work I did the same to the other shoe. It took a while to tape both of these up but here's the sped up version for you. Uh, they'll be done in a minute. Some of you guys mentioned I should paint a white base coat on things, which is a good point. The good thing about these shoes is that they're already white, so I can just skip that step, which I skip half the time anyway. I wanted to paint a dusky sky on both of these shoes, kind of like midnight in a forest. That's the vibe I was going for, except for right now it looks like an afternoon sky. But that's alright. Things will sort themselves out. So yeah, they're just all blue now. Pretty simple stuff. I took a little brush and tried painting wisps in the sky. Hmm. Yes. I was thinking it would look artistic and add more depth mm -hmm. to the sky. Hmm. Yes. Yes. A little more realistic. That was the goal anyway, but you can barely even tell that they're there right now. And then later on, they end up being mostly covered by the characters anyway, so I guess in the end, it didn't even matter. But I took my time on these wisps, so I need to give them the attention they deserve. Please acknowledge the wisps. The canvas material was really consuming the paints. It's a thirsty one. I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but yeah, that's what's happening. It's just drinking all my paint bottles up, especially the red. For whatever reason, the red really didn't want to show up. It took quite a bit of convincing to get it to make an appearance. Way too much layering, but I made it work. Eventually? I actually ended up taking out my tried and true, my one and only, my old faithful. Pasta pants. I used these to kind of layer up some of the red on top of the red paint, and I think that helped it show up a bit better. Not sure if you guys can tell or not, but I'm painting on some mushrooms to start. And guest starring on today's episode are some gothic gnome characters I had made a while back. If you've been here a long time, you might recognize Smelga and Paul. I've never really drew or painted them before today. They've only been in sock gnome form, so I wasn't entirely sure how their 2D versions would look on the shoes. But I really love gnomes and their whole vibe. In fact, I made a gnome of Nerdy Crafter a while back. I hope you can tell it's supposed to be her. I still need to send it to her. She told me she's afraid of gnomes, so I thought this would be the perfect evil gift. So yeah, you can say I'm a little obsessed with gnomes. Paul's the gnome with the majestic white beard. He looks a lot like his distant cousin Santa Claus, except Paul is short and stout and looks like a teapot. <coughs> Obviously, they bear a strong resemblance since they're both equally... Fat. You can see in the next scene the color of the mushroom magically changes. It gets a whole lot brighter. There were a lot more layers of red Posca paint that went on off camera, which helped brighten things up.
If you're new here and you don't want foot fungus, that's when mushrooms grow out of your feet, or at least that's how I picture it, then you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. I'm just adding tons and tons of mushrooms to the mushroom patch. In the meantime, Paul's just daydreaming about his one true love. Oscar Pears. Sorry, slip of the tongue. I meant to say Smelga. That's right. Smelga's madly in love with Paul. She's captivated by his beauty. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> say it again. Evermore. Oh my gosh. Not everyone can have a teapot bot after all. It takes a lot of overindulging to get a body like Paul's. <laughs> She likes to wear her hair in two braids. I actually think a lot of girl gnomes tend to wear their hair like that. By the way, you might notice a slight difference in lighting between Smelga and Paul's shoe while I'm painting them. I painted Paul's shoe before I moved with sucky lighting and then Smelga's shoe after I moved with slightly better lighting that should be more consistent rather than getting light and dark all the time. Hopefully you guys notice an improvement in lighting over time. If not, I just wasted a bunch of money. Painting her face was a bit of a struggle. The canvas was kinda textured so it was hard to get the expressions exactly how I wanted them. I wanted Smelga to look happy but she just looked horrified, or I guess more like horrifying. To me, she kind of looks like Miss Piggy, but I'm not complaining. Some of these mushrooms may look like they're floating. Not to worry though, that's a normal side effect. I'll be adding in some grass in a second, so it'll make more sense. The mushrooms I painted today are one of those red mushrooms with the white spots, the ones that you can only eat once in your life. They're slightly poisonous, so I wanted my characters to be frolicking in a giant patch of them at midnight, really setting the mood here. It just so happens that gnomes in general love these types of mushrooms for whatever reason. Most of the gnomes I've seen are always around these poisonous mushrooms, not entirely sure what's the story behind that. So I actually looked it up and did some digging. Some websites are saying these mushrooms aren't completely poisonous, just a little poisonous. They kinda make you, uh, see things. These kind of mushrooms just seem to be associated with fairies and gnomes. And apparently gnomes wear their red pointy hats to better blend in with these mushrooms when they're prancing about the local mushroom patches. Smelga and Paul are goth gnomes though, so they're a little different and edgy and don't care as much about societal norms. <laughs> Stop it. Do you want me to oh say it again? Gosh. And honestly, I think that's a great way to go about life. Roses are red, Stop it. violets Stop are it. blue. I love you. Oh I don't think I've ever seen goth gnomes before, but I don't know. I was using my imagination. Creativity at its peak. Some of the mushrooms were just kinda smushed together and looked like red blobs. So I went in and drew some separation. I have a pretty cartoony style of drawing. The black outlines kinda contribute to that. I think you could make it look cool with or without them to be honest, but I always just like to add them. I added some vines and other little marks here and there just to kinda bring it all together a bit more and add to that kinda cartoony style. Paul Paul has a fancy mustachio. I think it's supposed to be part French. All the French people have the best mustaches. That includes the women. Don't fact check me, it's just what I've heard. Paul has a paper in his hand that he's looking at. It's actually some poetry he wrote for Smelga. Meanwhile, Smelga's completely head over heels, falling over, fainting, because she's so enamored by Paul's deep <laughs> poetry. <laughs> I can't imagine what he wrote to receive such an over-the-top reaction, but clearly that poem was very moving. I don't really know if you can tell it's a piece of paper in his hand. It's supposed to be the edge of the paper because he's kinda reading it. He also has a little pen in his other hand in case inspiration strikes again, which it often does around Smelga. I added some little fireflies because remember, it's supposed to be midnight in a forest. I had to add in a little slice of moon because I felt like Smelga's shoe was looking a bit empty in the sky area. But yeah, the fireflies just help to get the right kind of mood lighting. Sure, let's go with that. To make Smelga look a tad bit less horrifying, I thought maybe teeth would help. That's quite the glow up. I think it made her mouth look a bit more natural and less like an endless black void. She almost looks happy. Almost. I tried peeling off the tape, figured I'd give you a nice, satisfying reveal. Things didn't go completely as planned, not sure where I went wrong, but yeah, this is how things went down. Clearly I haven't learned the tricks of the trade yet. I'm a little lost. I'm working on it though. Your patience and tolerance is much appreciated. How's it going? Oh my God. How's it going? 
The tape wasn't perfectly aligned, so there were some touch-ups needed, but the tape did help a lot. For any little paint splatters that did get on the white part of the shoe, I just took a white Posca and covered them up. I do plan on wearing these shoes out. I suspect they'll get pretty dirty and have some wear and tear, but that's alright. To keep them as pristine as possible, I decided to seal them with varnish. So that's Smelga and Paul back from the dead. I hope you like my custom lugs. Smelga farted! <laughs> Click on the top right or bottom left to clear the room ASAP. I've got to get out of here. Run, run. <laughs>